Okay, today we're gonna play a little fill in the blank game just to get us started off with. I'll give you a hint, the answer to both blanks are the same. Today's date is blank. And today I am also reading blank. November 9! Woo! Okay, yeah, that was probably the cheesiest way I could have possibly started this video. Today is gonna be both a reading vlog and also, just to add to the fun, this is my first time ever reading Colleen Hoover, and I know she's so many people's favorite author of all time, at least in like the romance genre. So I'm really excited to not only read Colleen Hoover for the first time, but also literally read this book on the day it is meant to be read, November 9th. And this video is going to be completely spoiler free. At the very end, I will be talking about all my thoughts and including spoilers, but I'll let you know when I'm getting to that. And I'm going to include the page number as I make comments. So that way, if you do have your own copy of the book and you want to like literally read along with me, you can. Okay, let's crack this baby open. I'm so excited. Okay, we've made it to 1st November 9th with a quote from Benton James Kessler. I am translucent, aquatic, drifting aimlessly. She is an anchor sinking in my sea. I have no idea who Benton James Kessler is, but I'm assuming he is another author that Colleen Hoover is quoting. Oh my gosh. Okay, already like the first lines are so good. I don't know what is happening or is about to happen, but let me just redo these first few sentences. I wonder what kind of sound it would make if I were to smash this glass against the side of his head. It's a thick glass. His head is hard. The potential for a big, nice thud is there. Well, I can't say that I'm not already intrigued just by these first few sentences. I have no idea if this is like a metaphor or if somebody is about to get like their head absolutely pummeled in by this girl. I'm only on page four, but I'm starting to see what all the hype is about Colleen's writing style. I love how it just like jumps right into the story and I'm already like trying to figure out and like guess what's going on. Like it says, he hasn't been a father since the night my acting career came to a standstill when I was just 16. Like that line itself is already juicy. Like the quotes around father, like what is like the history there? And then like what happened with her acting career? I just love when authors do that when you don't get the whole story, but you're getting like bits and pieces and you're trying to figure out like, okay, what is going on? It says that Fallon spent two months in the hospital when she was 16 and she has scars covering like almost all the left side of her body. If you remember on page four, it said that her acting career ended when she was 16. So I wonder if whatever happened that put her in the hospital was because of her acting career or if her acting career ended because of the reason she was put into the hospital. Oh my God. Okay, I just finished page eight and yikes. We found out a lot of information on this page. So November 9th is the anniversary of the accident that put her in the hospital. And we also figured out what that accident was that put her in the hospital. Her dad's house caught on fire and he forgot she was inside the house. And it says it was an accident, but I wonder if anything more is gonna happen with the fire later. Like maybe there was like foul play involved. I have no basis. This is just purely a guess, but I feel like there's more to this fire story. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so this random dude at the restaurant she's eating out with her dad just sat down with her and is pretending to be her boyfriend. Like this guy really just sat down and was like, sorry I'm late babe. And then like kissed the side of her head. This has got to be by far like the absolute cutest, like the cutest meat cute I have ever read ever. Like I already have butterflies. And he's literally said like three words to her. So I'm on page 23 and this next chapter says Ben at the top, which means it's dual POV and we're gonna get to hear from her fake boyfriend. Okay, I'm on page 38 and this quote is so good. It says, you'll never be able to find yourself if you're lost in someone else. That literally feels like it's like already a famous quote. Hmm. Okay, I just Googled it and it, it is indeed a Colleen Hoover original quote. I mean, I guess it makes sense because she didn't credit anyone, but damn, that's like, that's such a good quote. Interesting. Okay, Colleen's doing it again where she's giving us little bits and pieces of the story but not telling us everything, which I know is good writing, but I just want to know everything. I'm on page 54 and Ben is talking to his brother and he's telling his brother that he's fine. But then it says, I've promised my brother I'll be fine so many times it falls on deaf ears now. What is going on with Ben? Why is he like fine but also not fine? I want to know all about this man's life. Okay, I'm at the top of page 57 and this quote is hilarious and I would like to give you no context for this quote because I think it's just so much funnier that way. Ben says, I barely know you so I'm not about to argue with you over your level of intelligence because you could very well be as dumb as a rock. 
but at least you're pretty. I like Ben. We don't know a ton about like his life outside of his conversation and stuff with Fallon, but so far he seems funny and like so nice to Fallon. Uh, Colleen and these quotes. Okay, I swear I'm not just gonna keep repeatedly reading quotes that I like, but I have to read you this quote. So I'm on the bottom page 61 and Fallon says, one of the things I always try to remind myself of is that everyone has scars. A lot of them even worse than mine. The only difference is that mine are visible and most people's aren't. I don't know why that just gave me like, like mind blown vibes because that's so true. Like she has like a lot of physical scars, but a lot of people have such deep emotional scars that the average person isn't gonna see or know about. I mean, this is so cheesy, but whenever like you're feeling down, everyone has scars, physical or not, apparent or not. And yeah, I think that was like a really cool and like perfect way to word that. Uh, okay, I just finished page 73 and we finally got into like the whole main plot of the book which is that they're gonna meet every single year on November 9th. I think that is such a cute premise for a book. Like it's so unique and it's so fun. Ah, okay, I just finished page 79 and Ben did the cutest thing at the airport. And also this next section is called second November 9th. So interesting. I wasn't sure if we were gonna like follow the characters lives whenever they were apart over the year. So it looks like we're also only learning about the characters when the characters are learning about each other, which is every single November 9th. And there's another quote. Her tears and my soul, they live parallel lives, run, ache, burn, repeat. Her tears and my soul, they live parallel lives by Benton James Kessler. Oh my God. I feel dumb, but oh my God, oh my God. Okay, wow. The quote is by Benton James Kessler, Ben. The quotes are by Ben because Ben is like an inspiring writer in this book. That is so cute. I was really at the beginning like, I wonder who Ben James Kessler is. He's probably like some author calling likes, but no, he's the literal book character. Um, wow. Okay, I just read page 111 and I feel like I can't say what just happened because spoilers, but eek, something happened between Ben and his brother and it escalated so quickly. I don't even know why or how this even happened. Like, what? I just read page 129 and I feel like a little bit mixed about Ben and Fallon. This is again only the second day they've ever spent together because it's their second November 9th and it just kind of seems like too good to be true. Ben just did this like big romantic gesture for Fallon which is so cute and like the lover of romance reads and the hopeless romantic in me just wants to be like swooning over it. But at the same time, Fallon even says it herself that it feels kind of like insta love which is her pet peeve and I agree. Like it's also my pet peeve. Like I think it's way cuter if you like slowly fall in love with someone over time because that means you're truly falling in love with like who they are as a person and not just like the idea of them. I also should mention for anyone who hasn't read this book before, and this is also in the summary, so this is not a spoiler, but Ben is writing a book about them meeting every year on November 9th. He's writing a romance novel about like their experience and their story. And so I'm also like really skeptical of what, whether Ben is doing this like big romantic gesture because he genuinely like really, really likes Fallon or because he wants like more content for his book. So I don't know, I'm a little sus of Ben and his motivations to be honest. And we're on our third in November 9th with another quote by Benton James Kessler, AKA Ben. She loved me, in quotations. She kissed me in bold. I tried to keep her in all caps. She left me with an ellipsis. Okay, that I think is my favorite quote so far. That is so cute. Oh wow, okay, so I'm on page 138. Something really bad happened to Ben and he says, there isn't a single thing in this world that could come for me like she could. There isn't a, like something really bad happened to Ben and there's not a single thing he wants to do but like be in Fallon's arms. Like again, that is so freaking cute. But also like, I don't know if I would be like gravitating towards a person I've known for two days if this bad of a thing happened to me. I feel like I would want my family or like my really close friends. I don't know. Oh, okay, the cutest thing ever just happened on page 143 and maybe I take back my cynical comments from earlier The cutest thing happened like I just said and it's giving me butterflies and I'm so excited for them Okay, literally the next page page 144 and this is so freaking cute if she's not careful I might just fall in love with her tonight <sighs> Okay 
Okay, I just finished page 158 and the way this boy looks at her and like the things that he says to her, oh my gosh, like I'm blushing. I'm blushing. Literally feels like a book character. And I know that he literally is a book character, <laughs> but if he was a real boy, I would be like, you are a book character. Like the things you say and do, like you're a book character. Like it's too perfect, but I love it at the same time. Again, I'm very confused, but I would like to leave you with this quote. He's beautiful. And somehow with the way he's looking down at me, I even believe I'm beautiful. <sighs> okay, I just heard page 168 and Fallon and Ben are fighting. I mean, it had to happen eventually, like it couldn't be so perfect. And I don't know, I'm not gonna say what they're fighting about because spoilers, but I'm definitely team Ben in this argument. However, I can see Fallon's side, which is so hard. And now I just finished page 171 and we're on our fourth November 9th. That's crazy. We've literally already read three years of these characters' lives. And as we have done with all the three other November 9ths, let's read our Ben quote. In her darkness, she is silent. In my darkness, she screams. I don't quite know what this quote means, but I'm intrigued to find out. It sounds dark. Oh my gosh. Fallon just dropped a big bomb, not to Ben, but to us, the readers. Wow. She really just like out here doing a whole life-changing thing for Ben. Okay, maybe I take back all my s cynical comments before because I am so invested in them. Hello, I've been reading for hours, so I decided to change up the scenery and I am laying in bed right now. I just finished page 189 and everything is a mess. Everything is awful. My heart is broken. Even in romance books, like they always end up together. Like, of course they're gonna end up in together at the end but I'm still just like a stress ball. Like I, I, I don't know how they like get past this. And to make things worse or maybe better, I don't know, the next section is the 5th November 9th. And after how the 4th November 9th ended, I honestly like wasn't sure if there was gonna be a 5th November 9th meeting. But anyway, I'm gonna read you the quote for this one. My flaws are draped in her mercy, revered by her false perception. And with her lips upon my skin, she will undress my deception. Deception, okay. I don't know how deception is gonna play into this, but I'm scared. I just finished page 205 and things took like an unexpectedly like kind of spicy turn and everything was just like a complete mess. So I'm very surprised, but like pleasantly surprised. I feel like in books, like full on spicy scene, you know what I'm talking about, obviously, that's gonna be spicy, but little touches to me sometimes are even like more spicy and like make me wanna blush even more because uh, it's just like the little moments that are so cute. Okay, I'm at the top of page 218 and Colleen with these quotes. Oh my God, like I swear I've never read another book where I've wanted to highlight so many things. It says, I laugh, relieved that she's, that she simply exists and that we were lucky enough to exist in the same lifetime, in the same area of the world and in the same state. My heart, Ben, okay, like I know Ben's a writer, but he's really just like everything he says. It's just like a beautiful quote. Okay, and oh my goodness, I'm literally on the next page at the top of page 219 and Fallon says, technically we've only spent about 28 total hours together since we met. And that's crazy. Like all the years they've been meeting up once a day and it's only accumulated to 28 total hours. That's what I was saying when I'm like, I love the characters and like the book, but I also just wish it was like a little more realistic because I feel like that's not a lot of accumulated time to like really like fall in love with someone, but it is spread out over a number of years. So I'm sure you're like thinking about that person. And Ugh, okay, I'm on page 221 and Fallon found Ben's book that he's been writing about the both of them. I don't know why, but I just have a really bad feeling about it. I think she's gonna read it and I just feel like she's gonna find something in there that she doesn't wanna know, but it's literally about them and their like love story. So I don't know why it would be bad, but I just feel anxious. Okay, page 225 and we're literally reading Ben's manuscript. Oh my God. Oh my God. I feel like I've had some oh my God moments so far, but not like this what in the plot twist what in the plot twist what in the actual plot twist what i just need a second to collect my thoughts because oh my goodness yeah colleen just dumped um a whole fact on us that is insane and i don't know the whole story yet so i need to keep reading to find out what in the heck this plot twist means because i'm very confused how this could happen 
Oh my gosh, okay, we're on the 6th, November 9th, and I'll read you guys a quote. Fate, a word meaning destiny. Fate, a word meaning doom. Oh no, Ben. Ooh, okay, I'm on page 243, and Fallon just got a really important package. What is it, you might ask? Who is it from, you might wanna know? Well, I'm not gonna tell you because you have to read the book because that would be a spoiler. Okay, I'm on page 248 and we're getting to read more of Ben's manuscript, which I'm so excited to read. And I'm like a paragraph in to the start of his manuscript and I think I might have a theory about what the plot twist is and how like everything is connected, but I don't know for sure yet if my theory is right. Okay, I'm like one page later and so far my theory is not entirely right, but I think it's going to be like 30% right. I still don't know exactly what's going to happen, but we're definitely finding everything out now, I think. I don't even know what page number I'm on because there's no page numbers in Ben's manuscript, but I think I'm towards the end of his like manuscript section and wow, I think we've like just about found out everything and it's a lot, like a lot of things and also a lot as in it's just heavy. And dramatic and I cannot imagine what Ben went through with that. It's also cool that we get to read it through Ben's manuscript because we're not just like hearing all the events through his POV but we're also literally hearing it through his writing because it's his manuscript so it's like his words of how he wants to tell his own story. So yeah I don't know it's kind of cool it's like a book within a book. Oh my gosh okay we're on the last November 9th and like I do every time I'll read you the quote. If lies were written, I would erase them, but they are spoken, etched within, with convalesced truth. Let me try that again. With convalesced truth, I scream out my, okay, Ben, all these big words, atonement. With convalesced truth, I scream out my atonement, let me repent against your skin. Benton James Kessler. I feel melancholy that it's the last November 9th. Okay, you guys, I finished the book and the ending was so cute. Honestly, like Ben is a writer, like he's a writer and I just expect nothing less. That being said, it was a little bit like too perfect of an ending in my opinion, like borderlining, like cheesy and kind of like wrapped up in a perfect ribbon bow, but nonetheless, incredibly cute in my heart. Now time for my final thoughts. I was reading the reviews on Goodreads and this book, has 4.33 stars on Goodreads. Like that is so high. I feel like if a book has 4.3 plus stars on Goodreads, then normally it's like slam dunk, slam dunk, slam dunk. But I'm a little bit mixed on this book. The way that Fallon and Ben meet, I was reading some of the Goodreads reviews and people have like mixed feelings about whether he should have just like showed up at her booth and pretended to be her boyfriend. But I think that's so cute. I also think the concept is so unique. I know there are other like movies and books kind of centered around like one day a year concepts, but I personally haven't seen or read one. So I think it was really cool that the only days in this book are on November 9th in such a unique way to get a glimpse into characters lives. And then the twist, the twist. And there's so many like little things in the beginning of the book that I just forgot about that all come back to the end. And so I think that is really cool how everything tied in the end and I like did not see the twist was coming at all. The thing that I do feel conflicted about is like how well everything throughout the book just completely tied into the twist at the very end. Did it tie in too perfectly? I'm hesitant to say that because maybe that's not fair. Maybe that's what I want. How do I describe it? It's just kind of like every little thing had a whole meaning and purpose at the end which is really cool but it did feel like the slide is a bit like gimmicky to me the other thing that i felt conflicted about is that ben is a writer and the thing that's cool about that is like obviously if you're a fan of romance books like you're gonna love a boy who's like a writer and that aspect of him is like so so cute but Again, like sometimes I just felt like he was too perfect. Like he always would say like the perfect things or create these like perfect moments. And then the last thing I'm gonna complain about um, is that again, back to the concept of like you only see the characters every single November 9th. I get that that's the concept and I think that's really cool. And I don't think there's any way that Colleen could have done that differently. But sometimes I did feel like we didn't really know like a ton about the characters outside of them together. I don't feel like I fully, fully know them from just glimpsing their life one day a year. And combined with that, their love story is definitely insta-love. Fallon talks about how she's like not a fan of insta-love, but then she goes on to have an insta-love story with Ben. I don't think it's like the worst thing ever, but it's not my favorite. I think it's like way cuter to like slowly fall in love with each other. But I would say overall, I would give it a 
a 3.75. I feel like a lot of people view three stars as bad, but I don't feel that way at all. I go by like the Goodreads system where three stars is liked it, four stars is really liked it. So I'm just, I'm almost to that four stars, but not quite there. Okay, now I'm gonna get into spoilers. So you have not read this book yet. I hope you enjoyed getting to read it with me. Okay, now that all the lame people who haven't read this book yet have left, let's talk about spoilers. How do we feel about Ben and Jordan getting together? It surprised me. It did surprise me. I thought that Ben or Fallon might eventually date someone and that might throw a wrench in the relationship because clearly they're not seeing each other for 364 days out of the year. But never in a million years did I expect it to be Jordan. And I totally get, I totally get that like Jordan and Ben both went through their own traumas and are grieving insanely about Kyle dying. And clearly they're like co-parenting Kyle's and Jordan's child. So you're gonna get like so close and lean on each other and be grieving together. But it was like a little weird that they got together. But again, I get it. I do get it. Everything I'm complaining about, I was mixed about, but I do have one giant pet peeve that I'm not mixed about. I hated this part. I absolutely hated this part. It's on page 297. And we just read the part in Ben's manuscript where he's talking about how he went to like save her from her dad who was like sucking. And they repeated a lot of the things that her dad had said to her that were absolutely terrible. And then Fallon just like completely justifies everything about her father. Like she says, he was expressing his opinion over my career, which every parent has the right to do. But like, do they have the right to do that? Like she's 18, she can do whatever she wants. And there's also a nice and appropriate way to discuss your child's career without just like absolutely destroying their confidence and all the dreams they have. Like he could have gave her clear and realistic understanding of her chances to make it in acting without just being completely rude. And then she says, even though I disagreed with him and the way he delivered it, he was never the best at communicating. I need to remember that there's more than one way people show love. And even though his way and my way are completely opposite, it's still love. Like girl, like, I agree with that statement, but I don't think it applies to her and her dad. She's being nice and the opposite way her dad is acting is rude to a literal child, his child. I completely understand now how the dad could have forgotten her in the house because he literally just found out about Ben's mom dying. You know, there's a fire going on, that's chaos. I get that. And I totally get like, it's your dad. Fallon could give him a second chance and like try and get to know him better. But I just feel like that was just like a perfect like ribbon, bow, wrap the package up beautifully way to just like justify every single shitty thing that her dad said to her. And I don't think that's cool. The ending with Ben committing the fire, I never saw that coming until it was literally spelled out. I thought at the very beginning that maybe there was gonna be more with the fire story, but then Colleen did a great job of like, I just completely forgot about that I had that suspicious thought until obviously they revealed that it was Ben. And then with his mom, like that has gotta be so hard. Like I can't imagine what he went through and how I would react. Like clearly Ben shouldn't have started the fire, but how would I react in that situation? I don't know, like I cannot judge him. And then like the tattoo came into play at the end with like that is the tattoo that his mom got and then Fallon ended up getting the tattoo. That's what I meant about feeling conflicted about like just every single thing like the fire, his mom's death, Kyle punching him, like the tattoo, like everything came back in the end. And I think that's like so smart. And I was so torn between like, is this just the perfect book ending or is it like too perfect? Okay, I'm gonna stop complaining now because I genuinely did really like it overall. And I stand by my 3.75 stars. I'm glad I finally got to read a Colleen Hoover book. I'm very excited to read other books by her and see like if I feel similarly about them and her writing style and just like her overall plot concepts or if she has other books that are gonna be like five star home runs for me and I have a feeling she will because I know people absolutely love her. Okay, with that being said, I'm gonna go but I'll see you guys next week with another video. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. Okay, I'll see you guys next week. Bye!